Welcome. Australians of all ages receive Meals on Wheels. Those living with mental or physical disabilities or older members of our community. They choose us because they appreciate that Meals on Wheels provides three services in one. We nourish by providing a well-balanced and nutritious meal. We care by providing vital social contact, monitoring health and well-being, and giving reassurance to both our customers and their families. If someone is losing weight or seems distressed, our volunteers notice and act accordingly. This is the preventative care aspect of our service. And thirdly, we connect communities. Volunteers are the heart of our service. They always say they get more than they give. This engagement and sense of purpose has a massive impact on so many lives. Our services don't work alone though. They work with and alongside other art organisations to enhance the lives of people in their communities. Together, these three elements make for a very powerful combination. Getting a week's supply of frozen meals from a private provider is not Meals on Wheels. We keep people well nourished, we intervene when they're in trouble, we prevent falls and hospital stays, we keep people at home for longer, which means that they spend less time in expensive residential care. It's been estimated for every dollar the government provides in subsidy, they get at least five back in downstream health savings. We are truly more than just a meal. However, we are also underfunded. And before I expand on this, I'd just like to recall a story. A few years ago, Grace rang up to inquire about getting meals for herself and her husband. She was asked if she could still cook. Yes. Still drive and shop? Yes. This call was taken by the then Regional Assessment Team in Western Australia, which, incidentally, was introduced in that state many years before the introduction of nationally funded Regional Assessment Teams and My Age Care. Grace was refused services. Grace had been actively involved in her community and rang the local Meals on Wheels provider directly. The coordinator found out that Grace was the full-time carer for her incapacitated husband and was juggling his health appointments and running the household and finding it harder to find the time to shop and cook. By the time an assessment was organised, her husband had to go into care and Grace didn't need the service. This story and others, like it at the time, were very concerning. Those meals and a friendly chat to a volunteer might have provided special comfort and assistance during those last arduous, emotional and demanding weeks in her role as carer. She reached out to a local community who would have been all too willing to help, but both were stymied by the system. With that in mind, about two and a half years ago, when we were consulted on the Commonwealth Home Support Program manual, Amoa argued and won the right to put clients on first and then refer to my aged care. I'm convinced this has stopped many more cases like Grace's occurring. While we do hear regular examples of people approaching my aged care who are not referred onto Meals on Wheels, it's a relief to hear that after a couple of years, our services have reported back that none of their referrals to my aged care are getting knocked back. Fortunately, most people continue to reach out to their local Meals on Wheels services first. We also highlighted at the time the limits to the policy of reablement and the inference that Meals on Wheels was a passive service of dependency. We pointed out that the service was, in and of itself, an enabler. 
As WA finally joins all the other states and transitions to direct federal funding next year, it's worth pausing to reflect. Local government is the main provider of Meals on Wheels there, and because of the low subsidy provided, many chose to opt out. So in places in WA today, you cannot even access Meals on Wheels. In five years from 2012, the number of people getting Meals on Wheels in WA almost halved. The parallels with the UK are sobering. There, over a similar time period, when funding for in-home support services, such as delivered meals and social support, had their funding cut, hospitalisation rates of malnourished old people increased by over 200%. But back in Australia, during the same time period, meals provision in South Australia, Queensland and New South Wales increased. So, are people living in the West less deserving than, or different from, those living in the East? In some ways, the Australian government is flying blind. Where is the evidence that when consumers are choosing alternatives to Meals on Wheels, that those alternatives are delivering cost-effective outcomes? Where is the modelling that says keeping the subsidy so low will lead to better health outcomes? Are there more hospital admissions in areas where Meals on Wheels does not exist or is chronically underfunded? Yes, according to American research. Yes, according to UK statistics. When reviewing the future of aged care in 2011, the Productivity Commission recommended that Meals on Wheels and some other services be left out of the formal aged care system because they considered them fundamental services that should be readily accessible to anyone in the community. In short, this meant that if someone needed help with meals, they should get it. Meals on Wheels seems to be caught in the middle of government cost shifting. Let's consider Victoria in this cost shifting paradigm. The only state in Australia, except WA, where the majority of services are provided by local government. They contribute up to 40% of the cost of a meal. In worrying signs, many are raising their prices to unaffordable levels, and in other instances, opting out of service provision altogether. Where is their incentive to stay in the business or to market their services to vulnerable people in the communities who might need them? After all, local government doesn't pay for hospitals or residential care. It costs about $1,000 a day to keep someone in hospital for one night. That's the equivalent of what the government spends on the total subsidy for one person for Meals on Wheels for a year in many parts of Australia. Sadly, the people that this cost is being shifted to, more often than not, are those using our services. Meals on Wheels services all over Australia large and small, are struggling not to pass on rising costs to their customers. Yet the government's very happy to <coughs> subsidise home care services from between 50 to 100%. They provide around $40 an hour for house cleaning, and the consumer pays about five. Yet for Meals on Wheels, they provide a subsidy that averages less than $5 a meal with our customers having to pay upwards of $9 or $10 a meal. It's simply not fair. And it puts the health of older people at risk if they can't afford their Meals on Wheels service. So, Meals on Wheels needs to be adequately funded, but it also needs to be appropriately funded. There's been much talk recently about a move away from block funding to individual funding. The suggestion that block funding Meals on Wheels services get now, which they use to operate and stay liquid, would be given directly to the consumer. The rationale is that the consumer would then decide if they wanted a week's supply of frozen meals from a private provider, or a care worker to cook a week's worth, a week's worth of casseroles and pop them in the fridge. 
a much more expensive option. Put simply, many, many Meals on Wheels services would fall over. We welcomed the news that the government has committed to continue with block funding until 2020, and we continue to press the case for block funding in the longer term. Now, we've had very productive discussions with representatives from the Department of Health recently, and in a sign of their respect for our service, they are here in the exhibition area over the next three days. So I urge all of you to take the time to tell them your experience, your stories and your concerns. So, where to from here? How do we get the balance right? How do we work with government on developing a sustainable model for the unique and varied Meals on Meals services across Australia? Earlier this year, AMOA asked for a very five, modest $5 million to address the funding inequities in each state and to stop struggling with services having to raise their fees for customers. In the same submission, we asked for $300,000 for AMOA to fund the resources to work with the government to find a sensible way forward. We haven't yet succeeded. But given what I've just laid out here in terms of the challenges we face, I'd urge the government to reconsider urgently. Meals on Wheels services are adapting and evolving, are focused on their customers, care about providing excellent meals and other services, and need to continue supporting and investing in our predominantly voluntary workforce, which is what makes these biannual conferences so important. But just before I wrap up, at the last conference two years ago, I mentioned my in-laws. I called them Ray and Isabel. Not their real names. <laughs> Isabel had a fall after a hospital and the family tried to get various services in. In short, Ray hated the idea and did his best to deter these hapless service providers. But Meals on Wheels weathered the pushback. They were both underweight at the time, so the entire family was relieved, especially those of us so far away in Victoria. Ray is now Isabel's full-time carer. Her dementia is advancing quite quickly, and he has come to really appreciate the social interactions with the Meals volunteers. I can't tell you what a comfort this is. Ray's just been diagnosed with stage four cancer, so I predict they had very little time together. There is absolutely no way they would have survived as long at home without these meals and the services provided by these amazing volunteers. But let's just say it's given them one extra year. That's cost the Australian government less than $2,000 in terms of subsidy per meal for two people for one whole year. Ray and Isabel's little service in rural Queensland has just saved the government a minimum of $100,000 in health costs. What an amazing service. So as we listen and debate and converse over the next three days, let's not forget to celebrate that fact. Have a great conference.